Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. We'll continue with section 7.4 EIGRP for IPv6. This is part of chapter 7 EIGRP. EIGRP for IPv6 is a remember EIGRP is a distance vector routing protocol for IPv4 or IPv6. The configuration and operation is similar to EIGRP for IPv4. The following remain the same as EIGRP for IPv4. Uses the same protocol number, 88. Maintains the topology table and queries if not feasible successor are available. And uses dual to calculate the successor routes. EIGRP for version 4 and EIGRP for version 6. IPv6 and IPv4. Advertise routes, IPv4 networks. In IPv6, he advertises IPv6 prefixes. Distance vector protocol, Yes, EIGRP for V4, IPv4 is a distance vector and is distance vector for IPv6 as well. Convergent technology uses both of them. They use dual algorithm. Metric, composite metric for both of them. They use bandwidth and delay. Optional, we can use reliability and load. Transport protocol, we use both. They use reliable transport protocol where uh, the hellos and acknowledgement, they are unreliable and updates, queries and replies are reliable uh, packet types. Update messages are partial and bounded updates. Neighbor discovery, we use hello packets to discover our neighbors. The source address and the destination address. So IPv4, the source address is going to be the source IPv4 address. Destination is going to be 2240010 IPv4 multicast address. The source address for IPv6 is going to be its link local address and the destination address is FF02 colon colon 10 for IPv6 multicast address. For EIGRP for version 4 does support plain text and MD5 authentication. EIGRP for IPv6 only supports MD5 authentication. Router ID is given in IPv4, EIGRP for IPv4 32-bit router ID same 32-bit router ID for IPv6. So EIGRP for IPv6, it does keep the table, similar tables to what we I, EIGRP for version 4 was keeping. It keeps a neighbor table, and that by establishing uh, the neighbor table we get, we build it by using our hellos messages. Then whatever our neighbor are telling us, we use we build a topology table. We pick the best path and we stick it on the a routing table. All the inf uh, messages, EIP, EIGRP messages for version six, if they use a link local address as a source, the destination is multicast address. So IPv6 link local address are in the FE80 colon colon 10 range. The first 10 uh, bits indicates that the first 10 bits are 11 11 110 zero, one zero, which results in the first he hextet having a range of uh, you can see there FE80 all the way up to FEBF now this is the topology that we're going to be using to configure our EIGRP for version uh, for IPv6 so first thing we do show running config on router 1 and we can see that we have gigabit 00, zero interface configured with IPv6 in address 2001 DB8 cafe 1 colon colon 1 forward slash 64 and we have interface serial 00, zero configured with IPv6 address and the DC so clock rate and interface S001 with an IPv6 address all everything is configured correctly then we move on to see the router 2, we have configured the same things but with different IP addresses ok and then router 3 as well has got configuration each interface has got correct IP address ok now, IPv6 routing protocol, they will use a link local address to exchange any routing messages. So we have to, by default, Cisco routers uses EUI64 to automatically create a link local address. So we have a prefix 
and we use our own MAC address and we put FFFE in the middle to bring this UI64. Static link local address make it easier to remember and identify the router. Link local addresses only need to be unique on the link. So for example, IPv6 address FEA0 colon colon 1 will give it for router 1. And hit the question mark there, we actually have to type link hyphen local to make sure that this is our link local address. So FEA0 colon colon 1, that represents router 1. We can do the same IP address on the other interfaces as well because it's local on the link only. It doesn't travel from one link to another or from one network to another network. So router 1 will always, every interface will have FE80 colon quarter 1. Then we do for router 2, same configuration, FE80 colon quarter 2, and for router 3 as well. So enabling IPv6 routing. So IPv6 router EIGRP and then autonomous system number. So IPv6 is not enabled. IPv6 routing is not enabled. So we have to go, because by default, the IPv6 routing is not enabled. So we have to say, on the global configuration mode, we say IPv6 unicast routing. It is required So uh, for forwarding IPv6 packets, static IPv6 routing and dynamic IPv6 routing protocols. Then we enable the EIGRP routing protocol by saying IPv6 from the global config, router, EIGRP, and then the autonomous system number, 2 for example here. And we can see the prompt has changed, config hyphen RTR. The autonomous system number 2 has to be the same on all routers. Criteria for drive, deriving to router ID is the same as an IPv4. First, whatever we configure, if we configure the router ID, that will be our router ID. If we haven't, it will pick the highest loopback IPv4 address. If we don't have any loopback IPv4 addresses, then it will pick the highest active interface in IPv4 address, so physical IP interface. Right. EIGRP, IPv4 and IPv6, they will all require 32-bit router ID. So we have to say EIGRP, router hyphen ID, and then give it number 1.000. This is just a number. It doesn't represent an IP address or anything. It's just ID. If there is no 32-bit IPv4 address configured on the router, the router ID command is required. So if we don't have any IPv4, then we definitely have to have this. This is used to uniquely identify the router EIGRP messages. The important thing about the EIGRP is that once we enter the router ID, we have to say no shutdown for us to actually enable EIGRP. So this is this command. Sometimes the students I forget. So once you enable IPv6, router EIGRP2, make sure that you do no shutdown. And that's it. Done. We can go out from, it, from here. Type exit. So we do the same thing for router 2 and router 3. Enable the IP, IPv6 routing, unicast routing. Then we enable IPv6 router ID, uh, router EIGRP, then autonomous system number the same. We define the router ID and no shutdown. That no shutdown will enable the EIGRP routing of version 6. EIGRP for IPv6 is enabled on the interface. So we don't have any network commands or anything. We have to go to each individual interface and enable it there. So interface G00 on router 1 for example. Like I said, no network command. IPv6, EIGRP, and then autonomous system number. Very easy. That now enables it, and you can start and send in uh, hello uh, packets on this interface. Then you have to go to the other interfaces and enable it here and there as well. So EIGRP, uh, IPv6, EIGRP2 on the serial interface, and the other serial 001. Then when we do show IPv6, EIGRP neighbors, we should see our neighbors. So neighbors link local address, whatever the our neighbors, so we can see our their link local address. Local interface receiving the hello packets. So this is our interface where we're receiving the hellos. Seconds re remaining before we declare the neighbor down. The current hold time will be reset every time we receive a hello. And amount of time since the, we we have the neighbor added in the neighboring table. The other information, this is more about CCMP stuff smooth run trip timer and so on. Verifying EIGRP for IPv6 show IPv6 protocols. With this command it's very familiar to IPv4 that we did earlier. So this is will display us what is the autonomous system number. So autonomous system number two for example. 
then we display the k values that we are using the router id that we have administrative distance internal and external and what interfaces are enabled for eigp verifying eigp for ipv6 examine the ipv6 routing table by saying show ipv6 root then we can see here we have learned few routes through eigp because they will get um, code as d from jewel whatever routes that we have learned we notice that is from the link local because that's the advertising that's the source of the neighbor so routing messages come from the link local address of the neighboring router if you would like to see the configuration of basic eigp for ipv6 please select the link and hopefully to see you in the future videos and please don't forget to subscribe bye bye